Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Elise. I am the host of Smart, Happy, Strong Kids, and I'm the program director of Dolphin Kids Future Ready Leaders. And today I am with the Stigma Free Society, and I'm really fortunate to be with the Stigma Free Society and doing these Facebook Live events. And through these events, I'm representing the Stigma Free Society, a Canadian registered charity that aims to reduce the stigma of all kinds with a focus on mental health. They promote mental wellness education for youth, while providing resources for educators, school counselors, and parents and guardians. The Society's goal is to create awareness of the various stigmas that exist in the world, develop an understanding of the challenges that numerous people face, and encourage people to foster acceptance of themselves and others. To learn more, you can check out their website, stigmafreesociety.com. They have tons of resources, lots of lesson plans, free lesson plans, and materials for you to use to start the discussion around mental health. Awesome. Well, I hope everyone Again, it's having a wonderful start to their week, and it's already mid-March, which is crazy. The weather here is starting to blossom, bloom, be a lot more sunny, uh, which is always welcome and wonderful to see. Today, for our topic for Smart, Happy, Strong Kids, we're going to be talking about social connections um, and how we can still build social connections with other people and some positive tools that we can use to build those social connections through communication. And... One thing that we've really realized, especially in this last year, is that humans are social beings. Uh, we love to be socially connected with other people. It is how our brains are hardwired, and being socially connected to others is a super important part of our mental health, and it's a really, really important part of our ability to build our resiliency skills, our communication skills, collaboration skills. So there are lots of important things that go hand in hand with social connections. And it also just makes us feel really good. It helps us boost our endorphins, our uh, feelings of serotonin, uh, which makes us feel happy. So that is our topic for today. Uh, but first things first, in true Dolphin Kids fashion, we're going to do a little bit of downtime. So we're going to start first with three rounds of rainbow breathing. And then we're going to move to some stretching. And then we're going to move to a little emotions check-in. So if you are following along, well, a couple things you're going to need is a piece of paper. And we're also going to need a marker or pencil crayon or whatever you may have close by. Okay, wonderful. Give you a couple more seconds just to grab those materials before we get started on some downtime. And if you already have your materials ready to go, if you're in a chair like I am, you can sit nice and tall. Um, or if you're sitting on the floor, you still keep your back nice and tall. And what we're going to do to start off with is, again, three rounds of some deep breathing. So we're going to start with some rainbow breathing. And you can spring your hands right by your side. And we're going to take a big, deep breath up. And exhale down. Awesome, we're gonna do that two more times. Big inhale up. Exhale down. Great, and one more time, inhale up. Give yourself a high five for an awesome job. And exhale down. Great. What we're gonna do next is bring our right arm across our body and just give it a little bit of a stretch. You can even bring your head gently to the opposite side. Wonderful. Okay, now we're going to bring our left arm across our body. Bring your head over your shoulder. Great. Now we're going to bring our right arm up. Stretch your arm even a little bit more. And your other arm. Wonderful. We're just going to do some circles. Moving our bodies a little bit, get the wiggles out, get a chance to move around. I'm right by a beautiful window <laughs> near a park, <laughs> and sometimes it can be easily distracted. And downtime is a really great activity for you to kind of be able to move around and get focused. Okay, we're going to bring our circles to the back. Awesome, now we're going to bring our arms to the front, crisscross. Cross. 
Okay, great. Next thing we're gonna do is just give yourself a big bear hug, rock yourself back and forth, tell yourself how awesome you are, say thank you for an awesome day, waking up, being here, all the things that you do in a day is pretty amazing. Awesome job. Okay, the next step we're going to do now after downtime is we're gonna do a little emotions check-in. So we're going to do, if you were an ice cream scoop, how many scoops would you be today? Would you be one scoop? And maybe one scoop today is representing to you that you're not you know, feeling the best today. Would you be two scoops? You're feeling somewhat good. Or if you're three scoops, you're feeling awesome today, you're loving the weather, some of you might be on spring break. So how many scoops would you be? Would you be a one scoop ice cream, a two scoop ice cream, or a three scoop ice cream today? So take your paper and your marker and you can draw. Draw your ice cream. What, how many scoops would you be today? My ice cream today is going to be purple and then a waffle cone. The best. Okay, how many scoops would you be today? Would you be one, two, three? Maybe you said you'd need me four or five scoops. That would be a really awesome ice cream cone that I would love to buy. Today, I would say I'm three scoops. Uh, today has been such a beautiful day outside. Uh, if you watch some other videos of me, you know that I love nature, love being outdoors. So seeing the sunshine is always makes me feel happy and great. Um, and so kind of adding to that, uh, being outdoors um, and being around some people that I haven't seen in a long time have made me feel really great. So hold up your ice creams. How many scoops are you today? If you're one, hopefully by the end of the session, maybe you'll be two. Or maybe even by the end of the day, you can be three. So thinking even two, if you are feeling a one scoop kind of day, I mean, one scoop of ice cream is still great. <laughs> so uh, you can kind of think about what could you do to help make yourself feel even better, okay? So what are some tools that you could use? So maybe even rainbow breathing or some other tools that you can use to make yourself feel even better today. Always remember there's no right or wrong emotions. Uh, there are feelings that we all feel, all emotions are normal. So even if you aren't feeling the best today, maybe you're not a three scoop like me, that's okay. Um, that is totally fine. But being able to recognize how you're feeling, if you can name it, you can tame it, we'll be able to find some positive strategies that you can use to overcome those feelings or figure out how to deal with them. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to draw some ice cream. Maybe you can give it some sprinkles or some other colors uh, later on. And we're gonna move on now to a little bit more about our main topic for today, uh, which is social connections and building social connections with other people. I want you to just take a moment and think about some events that happened this year and what made it difficult for us to build social connections with other people. Could be some ideas, could be you couldn't see very many people this year or it could be even more difficult to talk to people this year. So there's a variety of reasons that um, social connections are really important to us. And one main reason that I mentioned in the beginning of this video is that social connections and being around people is how humans are hardwired. So we are, we are um, highly social beings, um, being connected to others and sharing and building relationships with other people is super important to us. And it helps make us feel connected and it helps us not only kind of feel grateful and appreciated, but it also helps us build really, really important skills like communication, contribution, collaboration, creativity even, critical thinking, adaptability. Being around other people can really help us learn and grow and it can really help us build strong bonds um, that can make us feel things like trust and appreciation. So building social connections 
are really important skills uh, that we really want to kind of build and foster. Even in uh, the certain year that we had uh, with the pandemic, we all found that being around friends and family is something that's super important to us. And we all found that we found ways, either through technology or whether it be uh, you know, through postcards or emails, uh, different ways that we could still connect and communicate with each other. Because that's really important is in order to build positive relationships with other people, we also need to be able to build our communication skills and really think about how we talk to other people and how we're using our communication um, to help communicate our ideas, our feelings, uh, our knowledge with other people in a way that helps us build our relationships in a way that helps us make us the relationship feel positive and the way it helps us um, kind of, again, build those relationships, build those friendships through positive communication strategies. So today what we're going to practice and what we're going to learn is a communication strategy called the sandwich method of communication. I know your tummy might be grumbling right now, <laughs> thinking of sandwiches. Um, but the sandwich method of communication, and at Dolphin Kids, sometimes we call this the dolphin uh, assertiveness uh, skills, is being able to share your ideas and your feedback with other people, um, but in a positive way. So sometimes when we are trying to communicate our ideas or our feelings with others, sometimes our emotions can get in the way and it can be a bit hard for us to really express how we feel in a positive way. I know when I'm in my fight mode and I feel kind of irritable or angry, sometimes I get mad and I could say either things I don't mean or I could just kind of have an angry tone of voice. So really depending on how you feel can really impact how you're speaking and how you're communicating with other people. Another thing that can really kind of impact how you're communicating with other people is if you want to give feedback. And giving feedback and sharing your ideas, especially when it may not be, it could be constructive feedback, um, isn't always easy to do. So being able to understand how you can really show empathy and start with positives and compliments and good um, kind of rapport in the beginning of your communication can really help you uh, share your ideas in a positive way. So the sandwich method of communication is really starting uh, with empathy, adding in your feedback or your critical ideas of what you want to communicate and talk about, and then ending with, again, with some positive feedback. Okay, so we're going to practice the strategy together. We're actually going to draw a sandwich. Um, another way you can do this, actually, if you have another piece of paper nearby, is you can fold it into three different sections. So that's what I'm going to do with my paper now. I'm just going to fold it in the middle. Fold it one more time. So when you open it up, it has three sections. So you're going to open it up. And it has three different sections here, section one, section two, and section three. So I want you to think of this piece of paper kind of as a sandwich. And I'll draw out what I mean. So first, start with the bottom of the sandwich. So first we're going to start at the bottom. And to me this is kind of like the bottom of the sandwich. I'm going to do a bun just because for my paper it's a little bit easier to draw. But on the bottom of the sandwich, you have the bread. And what I want you to think of for the bottom of your sandwich or the, the bread that you're starting with is I want you to think that as empathy or another thing you could think of when you're starting a conversation with a friend or a family member, especially when you're trying to share feedback with other people, starting with empathy which means you're able to understand kind of how the other person is thinking or where the other person is coming from. Or you can even start with a positive, start with a compliment. So for example, maybe you're trying to share an idea in a group or maybe a friend shared an idea in a group and you don't really necessarily agree with that idea. Maybe you have a different way of approaching the situation. You could always start with, again, empathy. I understand uh, your idea and I think it could be really great starting with positive. So really kind of showing that you're listening to the other person and, and that you're, you're, you're thinking that, okay, hey, some of this is positive. Um, or maybe a certain aspect or characteristic about their idea or what they're trying to communicate with you is positive too. 
Okay, so always starting with empathy, always starting with the positive. The reason why is that really, again, it signals to our brain positive feelings. So you always want to start a conversation on a positive note. You always want to make people feel more receptive to listening to what you have to say and your feedback as well. And again, it just really builds those positive communication skills to help increase your social connections. Now the middle, the middle of your sandwich. So sometimes, I don't know what you like to put on your sandwiches. I put some lettuce. Again, I only have a purple marker, so all my stuff is purple. You have maybe some deli meats. Maybe you have a tomato. Maybe a couple tomatoes. Okay. And what else should I put on top? Maybe I'll add a pickle on top. One big pickle. Awesome. So you have a bunch of stuff in the middle. And all this stuff in the middle, I want you to think of as your feedback or what you're, the ideas that you really want to share with this other person. So really kind of thinking of the feedback as, you know, maybe some constructive criticism on their idea or maybe, you know, an idea you have or maybe a question you have or maybe, you know, sharing some comments or ideas um, of your own. Maybe if you, again, if you're doing a group project or something together. So think of this as the feedback that you're trying to give um, the other person. And that is kind of the, the stuff in the middle of your sandwich. Awesome. So again, example, starting with empathy or positive, a positive compliment or a positive idea, really kind of showcasing that you're listening. And then the middle here is the feedback, the things that you really want to share, the things that you want to say. Again, still doing it in a positive way. So you're not starting with a positive that's automatically going right to a negative, but starting with a positive, hey, I really, you know, understand your idea and I think that could be really great. However, uh, my idea is blank because I really think that this actually goes a lot more with what the teacher is asking us to do and it really kind of aligns a little bit more with our project idea. Okay, so really kind of again adding that feedback, the ideas that you want to integrate back into the conversation. So not putting them down, but really still keeping a positive note on the conversation. Okay, and the next thing that goes on your sandwich is the top of the sandwich. So the next part of the bun, or bread. And I want you to take a guess at home. What do you think would end on the sandwich here? What do you think would be the last thing to go at the top? So you start with empathy and a compliment. You add your feedback in the middle. And then how do you think you would want to end the conversation? Take a guess at home. You can shout it out loud. Positivity. <laughs> you want to end again with empathy or a positive. So you always want to end the conversation on a good note as well. So again, you can kind of, again, after you share that feedback, my idea is this way, but we can always really integrate your idea because I think it's really great. So maybe we can compromise and find a way to integrate both ideas into the project. So still being able to share your feedback, still being able to voice your opinion and, and how you feel about certain situations, but being able to sandwich it in between two positive comments. That's a really important part of the sandwich method of communication is really, again, starting with that positive, integrating your feedback in, and then ending with a positive as well. The reason why you want to end with a positive too, because again, it signals to our brains and it signals to our minds and our bodies that, okay, the feedback I'm getting is not too, too critical. And again, it makes you more receptive to listening, showing empathy, and approaching and learning different situations in new ways, being able to problem solve and understand kind of the different ways of approaching things. Awesome. So I want you to think, how could you use the sandwich method of communication? That's my challenge to you for this week. Maybe when you're talking to a parent um, or if you're talking to a friend or even a teacher at school, anyone, you can really use this uh, method of communication to help build your positive communication skills, be able to share your ideas, your opinions, and your feedback with other people, but doing it in a positive way. And the more you practice positive communication, the more you're able to build those positive communication skills, and you're more able to 
build your social connections with other people. So when you are talking to others, one important thing is always listening, but another important thing when you're talking is really using positive communication and watching what you say, but also how you say it. <laughs> um, so making sure that you are starting and ending with positive conversations is a really great tool to build your social connections with other people. Wonderful. Thank you so much for participating and listening to a little bit more about the sandwich method of communication. Uh, I love working on that skill with students in our programs and I think it's a really great s skill that all kids, any adults even, teens, anyone can practice. Okay, we're going to end off with a little bit more downtime. So this time we're going to end with box breathing. So we started with rainbow breathing, but this time we're going to end with a little bit of box breathing. So what we're going to do is hold out your pointer finger and you're going to take a big deep breath up. Hold. And hold again. Awesome. We're going to do that one more time. Take a big deep breath up. Awesome. So that one's box breathing. Good refresher. That one's a really great one too to signal to your brains and bodies that you're safe, that you're calm, and that you're relaxed. You could do a couple rounds of box breathing, maybe even before you use the sandwich method with a friend or a family member. Um, sometimes when we start communication strategies or when we're starting trying to communicate our ideas to other people, it can make us feel a little bit nervous, anxious. Box breathing is a really great tool to help calm those feelings down so you feel more focused and you feel more confident to achieve the goal or task you have set for yourself. Awesome job. Okay, we're going to end with our Dolphin Kids mantra. So everyone can take a big deep breath up. Bring your hands on your head. And say, I'm smart. Bring your hands to your heart and say, I'm happy. And bring your muscles up and say, I'm strong. Awesome, we're going to do that one more time. Inhale up. Hands on your head. Say, I'm smart. I'm happy. And I'm strong. Awesome job, big high five. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you in a couple weeks for another Smart, Happy, Strong Kids episode. Take care.